We are back in the garden today. We are going to be doing a July garden tour. Today is Independence Day, so happy 4th of July to all of you out there. We're gonna walk you through the garden and show you what has changed from the last three weeks when we did the video, and also kind of talk about what our plans are for the food that we have coming out of the garden. We're gonna revisit this part of the garden in just a moment, but I'm going to first start with the high tunnel tour. So our high tunnel is a 12 by 36 and we have UV six milliliter treated poly on the high tunnel. So far, everything's been going great with that this year. I'm really, really happy. And we have had this really hot heat, but things are managing well in there. If I haven't pointed it out, we have shade cloth on this. We did that back in Oregon. Shade cloth to me is kind of like a necessity if you live somewhere where it gets hot with the greenhouse and it's 40% blockage of sun. You can tell this is a little short. We did um, miscalculate, I think, a little bit what size we needed, so we did order a new one that's actually gonna cover the full length. But all in all, the shade cloth has been working really well, and we just leave it on 24 seven. We don't take it on and off. I'm gonna go over a rundown of our routine with the high tunnel. So at night we do close everything up, but first thing in the morning, since the sun comes up so early here, I do open up this door and it's a pretty large door. It's a four by six and a half, I believe. We open it up all the way. Eric put this cool little bungee so we can bungee it to the fence and we don't have to worry about it slamming closed or anything like that. And then we have two fans set up in here. I have one at the front of the high tunnel and I either do a combination of things. I either put it in either row or I have it outside blowing some of that cooler air in. Now in the back of the greenhouse we have this large window but only one of these panels opens up and it has been good enough for the ventilation we need. On a hot day like this we can keep this greenhouse in the 70s to 80s which is perfect for me. We have another fan here that blows out hot air if it gets really hot. Sometimes I take it off and I put it at this back of the greenhouse so we get better ventilation and that can help with pollination of the whole high tunnel. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk about what we have in here, how it is doing, and how we are going to be using it. In the back, I have zucchini in grow pots, and they seem to be doing really well. I have two different varieties, and the zucchini are primarily going to be for fresh eating, but they put off a lot of zucchini, so we will probably be storing some of those as well. This is a really pretty plant here, and you can tell it's already blossoming, and I think it's already setting fruit too. We have a few of these Cuban oregano plants that were given to us when we went to a nursery. Really cool, they started out about this size and they're looking great now. It's a, like a fuzzy, stronger version of oregano. I planted some hibiscus because I had some seed left over. Hoping to use that for teas. In this middle row, I have a mixture of basils. I have some in pots. And the next row I have eggplant. For basil, we're going to be using a lot of that fresh and in canning as well. Same goes for the eggplants. We'll probably can more of them than eat them fresh since they do tend to put on a lot of fruit. This is an eggplant that has been pollinated. So that fruit is set. And again, these are putting on a lot of flowers. These have done really well in here, what, but one day I did have a minor setback. I came in and there was about a million aphids on them. So I do have an insecticidal spray that I sprayed on them a few times and they're recovering nicely, but they did get a wee bit out of control there for a day or two. So next we want to show these tomateos. We generally only grow two, but we had a pack of six and I think we have five here and they are killing it. I mean, they're bigger than I ever thought they'd be. I didn't know that tomatoes got this big. Maybe they get even bigger somewhere in the south, but they're close to five feet now. I think they are five feet. They have lots of foliage, lots of flowers, so we're going to be canning pretty much all of that as salsa. This is what the fruit looks like, and there's a little tomato in there, and this is the, I don't know if it's called husk, but it's the outer portion of it. We've got more basil uh, at the end of this row, and then we go into green beans and our shelling beans. Our green beans can go about eight feet, so I knew they were gonna start to do this, and what I may do is just try to wrap them around this and see if we can get them to trellis around there. Green beans are the easiest thing to trellis. They pretty much 
trellis without any sort of guidance. The purpose with the green beans is to eat them all fresh. So we may can some, but again, we really just want to eat them fresh. This is where our shelling beans are. And this is the first time growing these for us. We obviously plan to just keep them dry, maybe even canned in soups or something like that. They're all doing really well. The Windsor Fava doesn't really trellis. I don't think I knew that. So it's not trellising. It's just kind of growing and I'm just putting it in here so it stays upright. Everything in the greenhouse has pretty much done 100% very happy with it. The corn is doing great, but I did have something occur that I wanted to share with you guys. It was putting on a lot of growth really fast as corn does, but one day I came out here and I noticed that some of the stalks were kind of floppy. So I looked it up and it's called twisted whirl corn syndrome. And basically what's happening is there was either a shifted temperature or the corn is just trying to grow too fast and these little whirls, the leaves on the inside don't unfold properly. So it does kind of delay or stunt the growth a little bit, but supposedly it outgrows itself, which it really has done and it will still give you a good corn yield. So this is an example of that syndrome I was talking about. And before you probably about a week ago, this whole stalk was more yellow and flopped over. Now it's starting to grow out of it, but you can still see these wrinkly leaves. This is a yellow corn that is starting to produce its tassels. I'm hoping they still get a few feet taller. I think they will. And then I have a white corn over here. And this white corn was not affected at all by that whirl. So these ones are a little bit taller. We are growing this corn for fresh eating. So we're going to be eating a lot of corn. We have canned it in the past, but we prefer it fresh. This is the area where we have our melons and squashes. I have these little watermelons right here and they're doing pretty good. They're a little bit slower, but so far everything's really healthy with them and they're starting to vine up. Next we go into our winter squashes and the watermelon are gonna be for fresh eating, but the squashes are going to be for storage. So I think we're all familiar with squash kind of being that plant that gets really big and just rambles with these vines and is very much so still doing that. So what I've done is I have been managing the vines a little better and helping them trellis. If they don't trellis on their own, a lot of them do. And I know they're most likely going to surpass this. These ones, the spaghetti squash has already surpassed the height that we have allowed for it. One other way I'm helping these plants out or helping us out is going ahead and trimming some of the foliage. I, I trim the lower leaves. I trim any crisscross, you know, vines or leaves in there just because of where we're at, I can't let them get to their full mature size in here. These are spaghetti squash tendrils that you can tell are doing their thing. I don't even have to tell them what to do. So that's what the plants look like underneath their leaves. Again, I have trimmed a lot of that lower foliage off. I need to keep good airflow going through there, not only for pollination, but also to minimize the chance of any sort of like fungal or mildew because that can happen in this type of environment where we have heat and moisture. Also, Eric and I would not be able to walk through here if I didn't manage these. So we're keeping the rows clear. Next, we have our peppers and I am super thrilled with them. If you're in the South, you may not be as thrilled with them, but we never got our peppers this big and this bushy in Oregon, which is pretty cool because we're in Alaska and I didn't even prune these but what I'm finding is they're branching out up top and they're setting a tremendous amount of flowers the best part is they are getting pollinated I have not pruned these I've just had wind or a fan going on them and I do have pollinators come in and out of the high tunnel some of them never make it back out but they've done their job for me so let's go ahead and show you guys some of the fruit that's setting on these. You can tell that this one already has a bunch of flowers and they're setting this is a bell pepper I believe this is a banana pepper and I've got a jalapeno next to it. These have really good flowers. I'm super excited about that. I haven't even put any sort of liquid bloom or anything on them. I think they're, they're really doing good. I'm very impressed with that. And again, they're super close together, but it shows that you can have them this close together and they will successfully pollinate again, either by bugs or by wind. With these peppers, we are going to be doing pretty much canning and using them in recipes. We tend to stray away from spices and, you know, lots of like store-bought additives, things that you can add to your food to make it taste better. So we like the heat and we're going to be adding peppers to a lot of things. Over here we have more peppers and they are also setting 
their fruit. Then we jump to dill and cucumbers. And the cucumbers, they vine pretty well on their own, but sometimes I do go along and just twist them and make sure they're going up the way I want them to. They're a little bit close to the dill. We have to come through today and go ahead and snip all this dill off. We're gonna be using that in pickling primarily and putting it away for some other canning recipes. The cucumbers, I did go ahead and trim off lower foliage to help again with mildew and also help with pollination. I don't really want fruit or leaves sitting directly on that ground with the wet soil. We have a few herbs throughout. We have chamomile, pineapple sage, obviously the dill. I have lemon balm and lemon verbena. And those are mainly being grown because they're not perennials. Not all of them are perennials, but they won't perennialize here. So we are going growing those mainly for just canning purposes and or putting away for teas for this winter. And lastly, in the high tunnel, I'm gonna show you guys the tomatoes. They are doing great. And these I have had to manipulate to an extreme. I've probably removed a third of the foliage altogether, all the lower branches and anything that's crisscross in here. I really want these to pollinate. And so far we're at like 100% pollination. Each little fruiting vine, all of them are successfully setting. So that's really exciting. Tomatoes don't trellis, but I do have a string that I just move up on them and tighten. It is time consuming, but that's just the way I have to do it this year. Maybe I'll figure out a better system in the future. These are stupice. They look really good. You can see there's lots of flower clusters. Again, I haven't put liquid bloom, but I may put liquid bloom on these to help encourage more flowering. They're still growing, but they're definitely at the point where I want them to start setting that fruit so we can eat tomatoes. We have five different varieties of tomatoes growing in here and most of them are the indeterminate kind. I did get a little greedy and I have two central stalks on most of the plants. This is a sucker, so I'm gonna go ahead and just break that off. The only thing I would change is put these cherry tomatoes, which are determinate, so they get very big and bushy. I would probably put them in a separate area. I'm not even a huge fan of cherry tomatoes. They tend to just take up a lot of space and they require a lot of picking. So next year I'd probably just put these in a separate spot. These are Roma tomatoes. They look really good. I'll probably add some cow mag just to make sure they don't get blossom end rot. Sometimes we find that with those sauce tomatoes. And we are pretty much using all the tomatoes mostly for preserving, either for like sun-dried tomatoes, canning, tomato sauce, salsa, but we will be eating some of them fresh too. That is a Kellogg's tomato for fresh eating. That is probably our favorite tomato. So just to recap, these tomatoes are definitely pruned back pretty significantly because of the situation. I don't want them getting out of control in here and I want them to be healthy and set fruit and not get sick. They're pretty susceptible to blight. In the past, we were able to keep more liters, but this time around, I'm pretty happy that we're even able to have two liters per plant. I think we're gonna have a really good yield this year for our canning. So let's go ahead and head out to the rest of the garden. This is the mint over here. We are mainly growing these for teas, but they should overwinter, so I'm not as worried about it. And I don't know if you remember the last video, but they have successfully come out of their purple phase. And I think a lot of that was mainly due to cooler temperatures. This is the asparagus bed. I have lots of random herbs that are bolting, but that's okay. I like the flowers and the asparagus are coming up really thin this year. This bed gets a little more shade than some of the others, but it does really well with it. This is chamomile and we use these for tea. We just go along and pick those every few days and dry them out. This bed is a very cool one this year. It has lots of flowers in it. And again, I did that just to kind of fill in that space. I do think those raspberries are gonna to start to grow quite a bit bigger in the next few years. And same with the honeyberries at the end. We're just loving the marigolds. They provide that really cool color to look at when you look out here. And I did have extra mustards and things like that that I knew were gonna bolt, but I did put them out here. The bees seem to really like the pollen on them. At the end of the garden, we have sunflowers, borage, and catnip. This bed, I we are going to be using the sunflowers, the seeds for us. Although we can use the catnip and the borage to eat or for teas, we mainly have them just for color and for the bees to have a little something to pollinate. 
the strawberry bed is looking good. It's a little slow and bare. These are first years and we were set back a little bit. We had to replant them. I've also got some dill growing out here too. We have beets over here that I need to thin, turnips and dill. And I do need to pull out, I, I have two options. I can pull out the turnips that are bolting. Some of them are bolting, some of them aren't. But again, the bees really seem to like this foliage. You can eat that as well, but I like to leave it for the bees. At the end of this row, I have some parsnips and we are going to be using those for either canning or just storage. They're good in the middle of winter. We have carrots here. Those filled out nicely. I did go along and just replant some in the bare patches. Those are going to be storage, fresh eating, and canning. At the end, I've got our radishes. We have quite a few. Some of them are bolting and that's okay because I'm feeding them to the geese and the chickens. They really enjoy them. But most of them have been really good and we've been getting really good sized radishes. We have been having a hard time keeping up with the radishes eating fresh because there's so many and they're pretty big, but we've just been starting to cook them, which is an awesome way to eat them. We're not gonna be canning any of them or anything like that. Really impressed with the varieties we grew this year. I grew quite a few new ones from MI Gardener. I think this is called China Rose or China Pink, I believe. And we also grew several varieties from Territorial Seed too. These are our snap peas and snow peas. They're still climbing and they're already flowering. We've got a really pretty sugar magnolia, I believe what it's called, and it sets a really pretty purple pod. And with the peas, we are planning on doing as much fresh eating with them as we can. The potatoes are doing awesome. We have held them up probably a total of three, maybe four times. And we've done that with a combination of straw and soil. They're doing really good. They're pretty much all flowering. Our main reason for growing potatoes is for storage, but once they start flowering, you can generally dig a few up and eat them fresh. This row was primarily for us for fresh eating, so leafy greens, mustard greens, things like that. And we did get a lot of premature bolting. I don't know if it's premature because we planted it late and it's pretty hot and that's just pretty much expected. So we did get a good amount of food off of them. Some of the things like sorrel and dandelions don't bolt as readily, so we'll probably have these for a while to eat. I have endive, napa cabbage, a few collards, and we have miner's lettuce, purslane, and some watercress coming in. Next to these, I have daikon radishes or daikon radishes. I'm hoping those go. It's pretty hot for them, so they may end up bolting. This was our mustards and our arugula. We actually ate quite a bit of those before they started to bolt. And the flowers, I just love. The bees seem to really like them too, so that's always a good thing. These are our lettuces, and the plan with them is we're just coming in and harvesting ahead. That way they don't get bitter and we can just eat them kind of right away when the season's best for them. Now with the bok choys, they did bolt, but they are still good. We pick them up and just do them in stir fries. The Thai side next to me, we got a good amount of leaves off of it before it decided to bolt. What I may try to do is because we didn't have this garden ready really in time for these types of greens, I may actually try a sowing now or in a few weeks to get like a fall harvest before we have some of that worse winter weather and see if we can get some more greens in that time. This is auric, that's that mountain spinach I showed a while back. I absolutely love this plant. It's really good fresh eating or cooked. At the end of this row, we have extra cauliflower and cabbages growing. And the plan with the cauliflower is actually primarily pickling it and canning some of it. And cabbage, again, storage and probably doing sauerkraut. At the end of these rows, we have kale lots of kale. The goal with that is just fresh eating. We pretty much eat from these twice a day and we also want to can quite a bit this year so we can have greens in the winter. They are a hardier green so they'll hold up to the canning process pretty well. Next we have collards and collards are awesome for fresh eating but they're great too for canning. I do plan to do that. These plants are still growing but we have been pretty much just harvesting from them which I want to do generally in the past we would let them get to maturity before I'd harvest, but I think this way we're really gonna get the most from the greens in the long run. We have Swiss chard finally coming around. It took a little while to get going. Some of them are bolting and some of them aren't. Those are again for fresh eating and for canning. These are the fennels growing and they are starting to bulb. They should get quite a bit bigger. Doing good so far with those. Celery is 
really taken its time. I think it is a little bit stunted, truthfully. It should have probably put on some more growth, but worst case scenario would we'll just have super small celery plants. I do plan to mainly have those for cooking. Fresh eating is pretty hard to grow to get them to be not stringy and taste kind of strong. So again, those are just mainly for adding flavor to dishes. This is a kohlrabi bulb and this one's almost ready to harvest. We like to harvest them when they're small like that. They're so tender on the inside. We don't eat the skin, we just peel them. These are mainly for fresh eating, but because of how many we have, we may need to pickle them or do some other type of preservation method. The beets I had to sow again and they're coming up good. I do need to thin them. We're just a little delayed on that. This one I was particularly worried that they'd bolt. I had read that could happen here in Alaska, but so far they're not bolting and I hope that doesn't happen because it's one of our absolute favorite things to eat. We generally eat them raw and fresh, but they are also great pickled and canned. This is our row of cabbage and they're already starting to form their heads, which is great. With this brassica bed, things for the most part have been growing really well. They were really fast to get going. They were probably the thing that grew the fastest out here. I am noticing that stuff is slowing down now. It's not quite growing at the rate I would want it to, but I'm still happy with it nonetheless. I did go ahead and plant some varieties that are more fall winter varieties. So I wanted to kind of experiment and see if that we would get like a harvest from that before we go into our winter. And so far things are looking pretty good. We've got the Brussels sprouts next to the cabbage. Brussels sprouts take a longer time to get those good sized sprouts. So they're already starting and I'm thinking fall is gonna be when they are ready. Next we have cauliflower and they are already starting to tighten those leaves around their buds on the inside. Again, I think that we are gonna get a good yield, but maybe some smaller heads, some heat stress heads. This is really hot weather we're having, and I do not believe this is typical for Alaska. We have been in the mid 80s for over a week now, and I know we still have another week to sustain of that weather, so it's a little bit stressful for these plants, I think. We're gonna keep moving along. I'll show you the broccoli. They are setting heads a little bit early, but that's okay. We're just harvesting them. They do send off a lot of side stalks which those are good to eat for you know, a few months as they keep putting those off. This is a nice tighter head, but you could tell these little leaves, I don't know what they're exactly called, but those are gonna open up too soon. It should be tighter and it should be overall a bigger plant by this stage, but we're still happy with getting some broccoli from them. This is our onion and leek bed. We've got bunching onions, leeks, and red onions, some sweet onions, and a yellow onion, I believe. I also have shallots in this bed too. They're finally putting on more of that leafy growth and they should keep putting it on for a while. Some of them are already bulbing too. I'm hoping that we get a good harvest this year. I really, I think we will. And the, the key point of growing these is actually for storage. I mean, they're great in canning recipes too, but we wanna be able to store a lot of these over the winter. This is our herb row and we got off to a little bit of a slow start here, but things are picking up. The chamomile looks great. We've been harvesting from that. It's our first time growing anise. That's quite a bit small and I'm not sure if it's premature bolting or if those are just the little things that it sends off. This is cilantro. We harvested a lot from this already, but it is bolting. I've already set aside new seeds, so we should have some continual growth throughout the summer. We want that available when we can salsa. Chives are right next to our cilantro and then we go on to parsley. The chives will perennialize so we don't have to start these from seed every year and the parsley is doing great. That should go all the way up into the winter. So I am growing clary sage for the first time this year and lavender next to it. The lavenders are really slow growing for us this year. I'm gonna really try to perennialize some of these herbs, whether it be potting them up before the end of fall and bringing them inside and keeping a light on them or something, because I just don't wanna to have to replant these every year. And if I were to do that again, I'd probably just buy transplants because herbs really need some time to get established before they can get bigger. Next to the lavender, I have oregano. The oregano is picking up speed and doing really good. This is gonna be a canning herb. Same with thyme. Those are really good for sauces and meats. And I have English thyme here growing. It's a really nice thyme. The tarragons are growing good and branching out. It's been a nice one to harvest and put with fish. 
depending on how much we get from each plant and what I can harvest is how I'll use it. I do want, my, my goal was to have these plants get bigger and then dry them at the end of the year so we had that dry spice over the winter. It's not gonna quite work with all of them since they're not putting on too much growth, but again, I'm gonna try for perennializing some of them and we'll just harvest what we can as we can. This is rosemary. I will be taking very good care of these over the winter. That is one of the hardest ones for me to start and to get it to grow big fast. So I just don't even want to have to deal with that every year. And next we have sage. Sage grows pretty quickly and it's easy to germinate. And these are starting to get bigger. So we should be able to just pull these at the end of the year and harvest what we have off of them. All in all, we are super thrilled how everything is growing so far this year. There are some setbacks and we're learning some new stuff. That's kind of just, I think, the way gardening is. Every year is different, especially with extreme weather too. So far with pests, we haven't had really too many bugs at all and we definitely haven't had any moose, hares, or even birds in the garden doing any damage. We still have a lot to learn because this is a whole new climate for us and I totally appreciate you guys following along and seeing how things are going. And we're really looking forward to doing more videos on harvest time, especially the potatoes. So keep looking for those throughout the season if you wanna see what we are able to harvest from here and can and put away for the winter.